Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. Today we got a service call for a refrigeration unit for a wine cooler. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. So we have, this is the blower section and we have three fans. One, two, and three. You can just look underneath. Let's move a couple of these bottles out the way. You can see that this fan blade is not spinning, considering the other two are. Most likely we have a bad fan. Let's just make sure, but most likely this is gonna need a replacement. So what we're gonna have to do is move all of these bottles out of the way so we can drop this down check for voltage and replace the motor if we have to so but before i even empty this out because i'm going to be dropping this blower if i don't shut off the condensing unit this whole coil is going to freeze because as the door is open we're going to be letting heat in the thermostat is going to think that we need to start to cool off the box compressor is going to run and if these fans are not blowing across the evaporator coil it's going to freeze up so we're going to start with shutting off the condensing unit for this so here is a room full of condensing units. These units are water-cooled. These are water-cooled condensers and they are tied into a cooling tower for this building. So let's see. Right here, this is the left lobby bar and this is the right lobby bar. So where is the power here? Looks like this BX right here comes here. Okay, lobby bar, low boy fridges. So we're working on the right one. Okay, it's shut off. So this is a relay it's saying that it's calling for cooling. It's a light on it. So the thermostat's calling and the compressor's off. That was the correct switch. Now we can begin by removing the bottles in the refrigerator and dropping that blower section. All right, so we're back upstairs. Got to move all these bottles out of the way. All right, so we cleared the bottles. Here's our blower. This is one piece. Squirrels. Just got a couple of Phillip heads on each end. So I'm just going to take this down and, and lower it. I should probably turn off the breaker. I'll find a switch for this. I can't find it. Well, this should be okay. I'm just taking it off just like this. Uh, I took off one end, and you know what? I could work from here. So here's the motor. This is our hotline and our neutral feeding the motor. If we're getting voltage and you know this thing is not spinning, it's a bad motor. Oh I can feel it's I can actually feel the power here, it's just stuck. Might be able to actually get it going by spinning it. That's not going, but I can literally feel power there. All right, I got my meter set to volts. I have one one probe just right in the solderless connector. Go to ground. We got 120. I just wanted to confirm that with you guys. So we're getting voltage. Nothing's happening. This is a bad fan motor. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the motor. Bring it to the supply shop, match it up, and replace it. All right, so I dropped the whole blower. I don't want to do this live. I can't find the breaker panel. I don't want to say these panels are huge. I don't want to start unplugging different circuits. So what I'm gonna do is I can see a plug right here. You should be able to just like right there, unplug it right there. Everything stopped. So now we can work safely. 
All right, so here's our two wires, our hot line and our neutral. This is 120 volts. So right there, we disconnected the power for the motor. All right, so we have four screws holding this. One, two, three, four. I'm just gonna pull out the whole bracket with the motor itself. It's gonna be the easiest way. Once I get the new motor, I could just rebuild it from there and just put my screws right back. Done. So, I'm just gonna use the screwdriver because for my drill, I'm using the same battery for this light. And right now, I'd rather use the light. All right. Only thing we need to be careful for is this. The only thing that's holding this thing together. Everything else is loose since we took out that plug. Let me hold it from the back so nothing falls. And let me not lose this screw. So let's loosen this. Now I got the whole motor. So from here, we're just gonna mash this up at the supply house, come back and reinstall it. So another sign that your motor is bad, keep in mind this box is at like around 40 degrees. You could take a temperature reading. We have a 111 degrees on this motor in a 40 degree refrigerator so that tells you right there that you were getting voltage and this motor is just overheating so if the motor is hot to the just to your touch and it's not spinning it's bad and it's getting voltage so let's get this motor all right we got a new blade and a new motor with the hardware so let's begin to rebuild this you know these blades this cup come right off like that holds in with a clip that's done and then let's see these two nuts hold in the motor so let's just line this up the same way so we do this correctly off okay one two off okay so we have two nuts here we're gonna use the new ones one two we're gonna round this through the nuts back on and tighten it down okay nice and tight so the old motor connections were right here with two solderless connectors this one has two wires sticking out so we just need to put one wire on each one we're gonna splice them and connect it that way so this is like this then this fan motor this blade with the ring sticking on the outside Probably gonna need to adjust this a little better afterwards. So we're just gonna slide that in. With the clip right there, it'll be a little easier. All right, and let's get inside the box. All right, so we got a lot of dust here. And while I'm here, it's always a good time 
to do a little maintenance, clean things up a bit because that's no good. So let's do a nice and clean job. Okay, so I cleaned everything up, but we have a little bit of an issue. The shaft is hitting the is hitting the bracket. So typically what I do with this is I just drill a little hole right in the middle where the shaft is being affected and that should clear up any issues because we don't want to mess things up. I can see that the shaft kind of seems like it was dug into here already and that could have caused the motor to go bad to begin with. So let's drill a hole through this. The shaft is hitting this piece here. So I'm just going to drill a hole right down the middle. Just be careful not to break the plastic. A little hole there and we should be okay. All right, so let's just put this cover back with just two screws. So from here, we're just gonna put our four screws. One, two, three, four. And just tighten it down. Okay, look how clean that is. Shaft is sticking out, right? That's the difference. Might just give this a quick wipe down. This looks really bad. That one's even worse. <laughs> just a little something we call taking pride in our work. This unit's gonna look brand new. All right. Looks brand new. Now that's a beautiful thing right there. Now we can focus on wiring the motor hanging this back up and just testing everything okay so the white should be our neutral and this is our hotline so we're gonna have to splice these so I'm just gonna cut this all right splice these two together Somebody behind me just broke some glasses. All right. And then we're gonna take one side of the motor and put that together. All right, so now we have three wires here. Cut this off a little bit. It's, it's a little long. Wire nut it. All right, I got one side. Now our neutral, I'm just gonna do the same thing. One. Two. Let's put those together as they were already. We're just not gonna use the solderless connector. That's all that we're changing here. Nothing else. And then the other side of the motor. Okay. Let's start the motor. Let's just take, cut off the excess. That's 120. So from there, this, I'm just gonna make these wires neat. And that's about it. So I'm gonna put some tie wraps over here and then we can test this motor. All right, everything is super neat. Nothing's gonna get in the way in the fan blade. And let's plug this in and test it. Okay, so I plugged it in back there. As you can see, our fan motor is spinning. Everything is super neat. Nothing is in the way. And now we can just hang this blower once again. All right. Everything is nice and clean. 
all three fans are spinning and now we can turn the condensing unit back on downstairs all right i heard the compressor just start yep and from here you know make sure you know we don't have any bubbles in the side glass and make sure we get the temperatures and the box satisfies the correct temperature but that's pretty much a service call and typically when a fan is not running that portion of the coil freezes up so that's how we're gonna replace that motor and that was my service call was gonna make sure everything was okay but the box was already cold the only thing I really noticed is that the fan motor wasn't running and that is what they called me for they said how come one of the fans are not spinning and that is because they had a bad fan motor if anybody found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe and i'll catch you all next time